Happy Wednesday, kittens. It is January 21st, 2015, and this is not a podcast episode 101. Welcome, and thank you for joining me today, both new and returning viewers. It means so much that you want to take a little bit of time out of your day to catch up with me. And yeah, lots of love for my kittens. That's just kind of weird because I don't normally do that. <laughs> So anyway, I am your host, Amanda. You can find me as Wit on Ravelry, as So Nitpicky on Plurk, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and on YouTube. I blog over at SoNitpicky.net, and you will occasionally see real blog posts. But you can also find the podcast um, embedded there through WordPress. And also, I am the dyer for Lamby Toes Yarns, uh, which is Lamby Toes Shop. Etsy.com. We're going to try something a little new this week and we're going to put everything right here. Hopefully the magic of editing has worked and that way we're not constantly scrolling things down through the bottom and having me try to time them out when I'm saying them. I don't understand why I start talking and the dogs decide to stop taking a nap and it's time to mess with that gate. Uh, so anyway, there is no real housekeeping this week. Um, it's been a very quiet week, very cold, like it has been just about anywhere else. You know, it's the uh, middle to end of January that's going to happen. And just trying to stay warm and trying to survive all of the cold days that um, we are all trapped inside. Because it's also very icy. We had a couple days where it popped up warm enough for stuff to melt. And it was not warm enough to evaporate it all before it quickly froze again. And there are very smooth, slick sheets of ice all over all the driveways and all the sidewalks. It's a little hazardous around here right now. So let's see. I think we're just going to get right into the show today and try to keep this as brief as possible for um, both file size reasons and because I'm sure you all have other podcasts to catch up on today. Um, I've been doing pretty well with mine lately. I'm only a couple of days behind versus... Um, six to ten days behind as I have been for a while and I'm trying to stay in that zone by watching at least one or two every day and keeping up so that I'm pretty current but I know how hard it can be when you're watching yours and you suddenly find one and it's like oh and by the way this one is an hour and a half long today <laughs> so we're gonna try not to do that to you so I have some knitting to share with you I have a finished object and a couple works in progress I have a little bit of spinning to show I have some cross stitching, not too much, but a little bit, and I have a little bit of enabling. Um, I finally sat down and wrote down those five crafty lessons I learned in 2014 that I'll share with you guys real quick. And if there's enough time, I will show you a little bit of stuff that went up into the shop last night or yesterday afternoon and is still left here if anybody would like to give it a new home. So let's get on with everything we need to talk about. First is my one finished object. So I can't remember if I talked about it last week, but my daughter had tried on my son's uh, tubey, it's a plain two by two rib neck warmer I made for him. And when I originally made him one, she didn't want one. And she finally tried it on last week on one of the very cold days. And she tried to steal his because it was so soft and warm. And as she put it, it hugged her face and it didn't fall down. And so I found a whole bunch of scraps and asked her what she thought of them. And she told me she liked them. So I went ahead and I made her a neck warmer. And um, it took me one night of knitting. I had a knit date last week. It took me one night of knitting to finish it. This is all scraps of Knit Picks yarns. They are all Swish, Swish Tonal, or the City Tweed Heavyweight. U.S. size 8. And for hers, I used 84 stitches. Less because that's the number I wanted to use and more because I didn't leave quite enough yarn on my tail for the cast on. None of the ends have been woven in on this because I could not find a single one of my darning needles this week. And I just went to Michael's not too long ago. I bought a new set of them and I will be weaving these in temporarily, but we're going to try to pop these into the tube so no one has to see them. So here is what I came up with. Um, it's showing up a little less pink and a little more red. But I used little bits of, I believe this is Squirrel Heather. The white tweed is the City Tweed in the snowshoe colorway. I cannot remember the name of the orange colorway, but I believe it may be Conch. And then this pink is a whole bunch of Knit Picks Swish Tonal in the Summer Blossoms colorway, I think it is. It's the very deep hot pink and slightly purple. And the way that this pooled when I knit it was really pretty. It was kind of more gentle 
stacking and moving rather than really big stripes like my son's. And then I just did the same thing all the way through. I think start to finish, this was like a three, maybe four hour project. Super easy peasy, nothing to it. Once you cast on, you just knit, 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 pearl, pearl, knit, knit, pearl, pearl the whole time. Sorry, they're scratching the wall. I don't understand why. Okay. Girls. Girls. Goodness. <laughs> So anyway, that has been finished, and I have enough of these yarns left over that I asked my daughter if she would like a matching accessory, and I told her I had enough that I could either do a hat or I could do mittens, and she chose mittens. There isn't quite enough that I'll get a full pair, but I have so many little bits and pieces of worsted or Aran Wade scraps that I could very easily substitute in one or maybe two more colors and get her ones that match this so that she has a little bit of a matching set going on. So hopefully I will have that to show pretty soon too. And yeah, then they'll have a chance to get used and loved before this season is up, and then I can start cycling out some of the two small hand knits that I already have for them in stash and uh help them out. So yay! Stash out. So let's see. The next thing I should talk to you about is works in progress. So I did work on two projects this week. I didn't have a ton of time for knitting. I took a lot of my crafting time and I used it for other things this week, including the shop update I talked about. I ended up it took a lot more time than I thought it would. So I lost a couple of days to dyeing and reskeining and all this stuff that goes with that. And then all day yesterday I was packing orders nonstop. But I did find a little bit of time to work on my Margot poncho. Margot was written by Elizabeth Smith and it is available as a $6 downloadable pattern on Ravelry. Um, she has her pattern collection or her pattern writing name is The Brown Stitch. And from last week, all I've done is I picked up the stitches and started knitting the ribbing down one of the sides. <clears throat> it's nothing too exciting. I'm to the row where I start doing the buttons. There are two buttons, and I need to determine where I want, how deep I want my armhole to be. <laughs> I don't understand why they're fighting. <laughs> they were napping before I recorded, believe it or not. I'm going to take care of them real quick. Okay, so now that they're squared away, let's get back to talking about knitting. So as I was trying to say, I am now on the row with the buttons. And I need to determine exactly how deep I want my armholes to be and where to place them. But um, what I ended up doing is I talked last week about how I had made the poncho too wide. And I could have very easily made the poncho a size, the size smaller. I had talked about how I thought I was going to fold over and pick up stitches. And that's exactly what I decided to do. If you look at the wrong side here, we're going to try not to click our needles and uh, make all sorts of horrible noises. On the other side here, I took, I don't know, about eight stitches or so of width, folded it over, and then in the bars in between the rows, I pulled the stitches apart and was very careful with this. I picked up three of every four. And it ended up being nice and neat. I did a very good job. I didn't hop rows at all. I was kind of afraid that I would. And this is the edge that I have. It's a very nice clean edge. And what I'm going to do is when I cast off my ribbing, I'm going to leave a very long tail and I'm going to very gently stitch down the ends of this ribbing to keep it nice and neat. And then I'm going to go up the back and every so many stitches gently tack it down up the inside so that the uh, edge stays nice and flat. But overall, I'm really happy with the look of this. I was a little worried that picking up in those bars in between might not give it enough stability, but it looks really, really smooth and um, nice and intentional. So I think you, know, you can kind of see it there. It just it looks pretty nice. So overall, I'm really, really happy with that. I'm still happy with how squishy this is, and I'm looking forward to hopefully wearing it soon. I need to see if I have any um, approximately one inch size buttons to use on this. If not, I may have to be running over to a big box store because I'm not so sure I want to um, go through the trouble of ordering nice buttons. I don't know. Maybe I will. I guess I'll figure it out once I get there and I see what my options are. So we're going to set this off to the side. That got a little bit of love, not as much as I would have liked, but honestly, up until yesterday, I had not picked it up at all. And then yesterday, it was approximately, I don't know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes while watching a podcast, while getting ready before getting ready to do all the other stuff I had to do yesterday. So other than that, he 
here living in my Stitch by Jessalou little bag. I also have my Query Fiber Art socks in the Askew colorway which is an 80-20 BFL nylon base. It's a high twist two ply because I, like I said, I carry this one too. And this is my um, personal sock club this year. This is pair one of eight because again I'm doing Bork designations because I can. So I am knitting these on US size zero needles. I knit my socks parallel two at a time but not on the same long needle. I like to work with 32 inch circulars when I do. Um, I can also work with 24s with single pairs of socks but I think 32s are slightly more versatile for things like hats and uh, sleeves and other things too. So I try to get as much mileage as I can out of a single set of needles. But I've discovered that in certain sizes that I use a lot for socks, like ones and zeros, I think I'm actually going to need four needles instead of two. So I actually have two more size zeros on their way from Amazon right now, and they're going to be the same types of needles. They're going to be Addy Turbo Sock Rockets. There are going to be a lot of cuts today because I'm trying to save you all from the scratching, digging noise, which is horrible on my end. I don't know how bad it is on the camera. I think it's quieter for you, but it's very distracting and it's very loud. So, as I was saying, I talked about this yarn quite at length last week, and I got some um, very good response and commentary back on it. So thank you to all of you who decided to tell your stories or to talk to me about the situation with the yarn. I discovered that talking about it actually made me feel quite a bit better about it after I kind of got it out there and a little bit more publicly than just bellyaching to one or two people about it. So I'm actually feeling quite a bit better about them and I was able to get a fair amount done. So last week I had this one knit up to I think about this darker green color. Let's actually get that out of the way, huh? So I've knit a couple more stripes on this one, but then on the other one, which had originally been just the little tiny toe cap, I got quite a bit done. So these socks are well on their way. I want to say I'm within about three inches of being able to get to where the heels are. I think on these ones I'm not going to worry about preserving stripe integrity and I'm just going to do my fish lips kiss heel like straight through and then just continue the striping from there because I'm not overly invested in these being the prettiest socks that have ever existed. And had I done that I would have split the cake in two first so that I could work from the opposite end and then keep going. So these have gotten a little bit of love and they're, you know, they're looking pretty good. Um, they're very bright and happy and cheerful. And these have actually inspired an idea for me for something I want to try dyeing up and we'll see how it goes. And I might be able to show it to you guys in the coming weeks here. So those have also been worked on a little bit this week. Although I'm not working on them too fast because Diane over at Suburban Stitcher starting in February is doing a rainbow along again. And she said that works in progress are fair game. And I would feel bad to knit all the socks but like maybe the ribbing or whatever and then just finish those in the first couple days of February. So I think I'm going to slow down on these a little bit and once my needles get here I'm going to cast on a second sock project to work on. And then I want to do these and participate in the rainbow along. Plus I have a really beautiful loop bat that I'm thinking I might do a selfish spin in between all my other spinning and that is also a rainbow and I will enter that too. So I'm hoping to have some uh, knit along. So I just discovered that all that stuff I recorded <laughs> disappeared because for some reason my computer stopped recording and did this weird thing and I lost a whole bunch, a big chunk of footage. So we're going to re-talk about some things here. I was just saying that I was hoping to have a couple entries into that knit along. So from there I uh, transitioned into spinning a yarn which I'm going to have to talk about all over again and I'm going to readjust my lighting situation here. I'm quickly losing light because of the time of day it is and every 15 to 20 minutes I have to adjust my blinds and try to keep my color um, set, uh, properly uh, focused here. So let's go. Okay so that's slightly better. We're going to go back to talking about exactly what I just finished talking about. So here we go. So last week I had been talking to you all about my qualms and worries about my Moon Rover April 2014 Club Braid Spin, which had, I guess here we go, which is Superwash Merino and Nylon. It's an 85-15 blend. Of course, the sun's going behind the clouds. <laughs> 
And uh, I had spun up two of three plies last week and was starting to work on the third. And I showed you the little nestlets of them. I showed you a picture of the braid and I told you why I was so worried about it. Well, kittens, here it is. And I think when I showed this to you the first time, I will just... I had stuck it over here. This isn't quite as nice as my original color I got, but it's close. This yarn is overall very blue and it's very green and it's very stripy. It turned out, oh, there we go. That was a little bit better. It turned out very, very pretty. In most of the sections, there are either two plies of blue or two plies of green or two plies of teal. And in some of them, there are there's like a section that looks like Christmas. There are some that look kind of like a banana split sundae, pink and yellow and brown. Um, there's a little bit of like starry night looking stuff in here. Lots of different beautiful, beautiful colors. And overall, it's very nice. I spun this a little finer than last week's spin, but not much. Because last week's spin I showed you, I had talked about how it turned out thicker than I had planned, it was a two-ply that ended up in the worsted weight area. Well, this is a three-ply, and it's just on the slightly heavy end of worsted weight. This bray, or this skein is 5.2 ounces, and I have a little bit of singles left over. I would say maybe one-tenth to two-tenths of an ounce that I'm going to put in with a bunch of others and make a crazy two-ply at some point. And um, so I'm guessing overall this braid was 5.3 maybe, 5.4 at most. Um, the braids tend to be a little on the heavy side. Um, Lacey is very generous with her braids. Um, I have yet to be shorted on any, but I've only spun up two. Uh, but my first one was, I think, 5.7. And this one is 5.3 to 5.4. So definitely well in that range. And yeah, it ended up coming out being about 284 yards to that amount. So it's on the slightly heavy end of worsted weight, but it's beautifully soft. It's very squishy, and I think it's going to knit up really nice. Um, my thought is that this might be a pair of house socks for the intended recipient. I'm still a little worried that the person I'm giving making these for might not like the colors so much. But as I predicted last week, my husband, upon seeing the finished yarn and feeling it, stole it. <laughs> he tried to claim it. And he told me that I should knit the socks in his size, and then when they are rejected, they can go immediately to him because, oh, they already fit. So I'm going to definitely have to do some more of this. And I've got plenty of colorways that are very, very reminiscent of things that my husband loves. So that is done and ready to go into its bag and to get stuck with some treats. And then after that, <clears throat> I continued working on my spindle plying project which was a spun right round spun right round bat named Glee. <laughs> there we go, we can't just smush it all into one word. And I've been spinning those on my Erin Make Stuff spindles. My, this was my first time spinning on this one, and it turns out that it's not as fast of a spinner as this one. This one is still out of the batch. I think this one's my favorite. Um, I like how all three of mine spin, but yeah, this is the one I definitely favor. And I worked out a different technique for keeping my singles continuous and all in one piece that worked out well that I'm going to do again. And I finally have the, spin the singles done and they're resting to be plied because I'm going to chain ply this. So here is how it came out. Isn't it pretty? And the colors are actually pretty good on this. It starts out as this beautiful purple, which is just very slightly more red than it's looking. And it transitions into lavender and then this kind of something. This kind of taupey gray goes into kind of a straw color, and then it ends up as this beautiful gold. And you can kind of see some of those glints of sparkle there. The purple and the gold are extremely sparkly. And then the color in between, there's a little bit, but not as much. So these two ends are. So the plans for this, and this should be approximately two ounces, is to chain ply it and see what weight I get from there and what kind of yardage. And then I'm either planning to knit like something small, like a toy that I can keep around and look at and smile because this bat was a merino, superwash merino, faux cashmere, glittery stuff and something else mix. I'll have to see if I can find the bag that it came in and what the bat information was. Um, I think it, there might be, I don't think there's any bamboo in here, but there's something else in there. 
or I might use this as a small color work accent or a color work accent for a small accessory piece like a cowl with color work and have it work its way up with something more solid in it. So I finished that this week. <clears throat> and then I prepped the fiber for my next spin, which is another one for my big gift thing, gift knitting uh, extravaganza I'm doing this year. And I am going to be doing a fractal spun or yeah, fractal spun two ply of some more move rover. This one is a superwash merino top, no name. This was when she was giving her colorways names like pink and green or whatever the predominant colors were. And it's going to be all these gorgeous shades. Um, this is one of the smaller bats, but as you can see, there's like cotton candy pink. There's these beautiful greens and grays. There's some gold hiding out in here. The better gold representation is actually hiding under there. And so many pretty colors. I'm hoping for something a little lighter weight because I was thinking about spinning this up for another accessory. Oh my goodness. Okay. But if it turns out thin enough, I might try socks because it is superwash treated and if it's plied tightly enough, it'll be okay. Otherwise, I might try a cowl, I think, or I might do like a hitchhiker or another Martina Bem-ish Bem -ish style um, scarf or a shawl, or scarf, or whatever people sometimes call those. But anyway, that's what I have been spinning. And I'm looking forward to, as I just mentioned in the previous section that kind of got cut off, that I will be starting at some point here a loop bump. And I'm not sure if I'm going to spindle spin it. I suppose if I wanted to, I could participate in the de-spackle then. That, uh, Kristen over at Volenbein is doing, or if I'm going to wait until my wheel is open and uh, do it on there, because it's definitely going to want to be done in a single piece and then chain plying, because I want to preserve the rainbow integrity of that. And I'm sure I'll find other things that I want to work on in the interim too, because that's what I do. I don't like being all about obligation anything. I like to throw in things for myself once in a while, which is why I've been doing the spindle projects as things that are fun for me. So anyway, Next, we have a little bit of Stitcher's Corner. Um, last Thursday when I recorded um, was when the first clue for the Storytime Sampler from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery went live. Um, this is a 1795 yearly sampler pattern, meaning that every month, um, and it's going to be the last day of the month before from here on out, you will get the next month's pattern clue, and you will have a full month to work on it before the next one releases. And in the first one, they released January's. They released um, all the frames at once, plus the thing at the top. And then they, um, the interesting thing about this year is that there's no writing of January, February, whatever. It's set up that there are four frames across and three rows of frames with a header at the top saying Storytime Sampler. And I'm not sure if they're going to throw in the year at some point, but I might end up um, stitching the year onto it somewhere. And so far, I have not finished the first clue yet. I did a whole bunch of crazy counting, got to roughly where I needed to be for January's frame, and so far, I have stitched in only my January frame which is this beautiful, very slightly variegated, I'm going to see if you guys can see the variegation, soft pink, you can't see it so much, but it is a Weeks Dye Works thread, and it is on Picture This Plus Lugana Even Weave, in, I think the colorway is called Storm. So, so far, that's what I have. And I'm able to do this one on a much smaller frame this time, because unlike the last couple years worth of samplers, this one is going to be fairly wee, comparatively. And for the first time ever, the pumpkins have put it on a 32 count even weave or a linen instead of a 28, which means that if you were using, I guess it's called Aida cloth, but everyone calls it Ada. If you were using Ada cloth, it would be a 16 count versus a 14 count, meaning there's 16 squares per inch of stitching versus 14, meaning everything is smaller. And of course, it's been kind of fun watching the uh, group on Facebook because a lot of people have been kind of freaking out about it a little bit. Now, I've been stitching on 32 count Lugana since at least the Halloween spooky sampler. I started stitching on smaller and smaller cloths to get smaller samplers because eventually I want to put these all up on the wall and I wanted as much room as possible. And I like the look of my stitches at this, um, I guess we'll call it gauge, at this gauge versus the 28 because they're slightly more filled in. Let's see if that'll focus. 
and they're a little more plump. And I really enjoy that look. So there that is. And I said this first one is Alice in Wonderland. There's going to be a pocket watch up here in this part. Um, all of these are designed that there's going to be an element of the story up here. So I've been looking at all the frames and looking at the shapes and trying to guess what they are. And then in here, you're going to see Alice, the Cheshire Cat, and the White Rabbit. It's super, super cute, and I'm hoping to maybe have it finished and it's ready to show you by next week. I also need to re-pick up my Once Upon a Time sampler. I have not touched it since last week when I told you I had put in, like, literally 10 minutes on it. It's still in timeout because of how I felt about it after all the ripping. But this one, I started, and I had the same problem. I was off by a single stitch, did not catch it until I had stitched for like an hour and then had to rip everything out and restart from a certain point. I'm starting to think um, this month I've been a little bit sleep deprived and I'm starting to think that it's really affecting my motor, my hand-eye coordination and my motor skills a little bit because I have been extremely accident prone and I've been making really stupid simple mistakes lately which is starting to get a little bit um, old but unfortunately my natural body clock is aggressively asserting itself right now. Um, I am naturally a night person. I'm part of that 5% who is not wired to be daytime. In the morning when that sun comes out and it hits most people and you start going, oh, it's time to wake up, circadian rhythm says, oh, light, time to get up. My body thinks that that's like the middle of the night. That's like 3 a.m. for me. <laughs> so 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So for me, that is prime sleeping time. I'm not affected by light. Um, Usually when I'm out in bright light, I'm just sleepy. <laughs> I'm just a night person. So unfortunately, I've been fighting with that a little bit, and I've been losing that battle because the older I get, the harder it is to try to force myself into a daytime schedule. So we'll see how that goes this week. Anyway, neither here nor there. We're going to do just a little bit of enabling and then talk about a couple other things towards the end here if my light continues to hold out, although I see it's starting to get very blue and things now, so we'll see. So the first thing that came in, and I've just gotten the mail today finally because my mail has been very slow in coming and outgoing lately, is my January 2015 Moon Rover Club braid. Now this month was going to be a little bit different because Lacey ran out of the 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon that she normally uses. So she warned us all about it beforehand and she said, listen, either you can accept this other fiber or if you don't want that, just make a note when you re-sign up for the club saying, please skip this month, restart me in February when she had her other fiber in. Now, I have never um, spun the splint before, so I said, no, I would love to try it because it would give me something slightly different. And it would be very interesting to see how her very long color repeat gradients um, show up on this type of fiber. So I'm going to quickly open this. Sorry about that if anyone has earbuds in. And I'm going to pull out the little sachet. So this was, again, January 2015. And this month, we are getting Superwash Merino Bamboo in Nylon. This is a fiber blend that um, is regularly called Panda. They call it a Panda blend because of the bamboo in it. And this month's colorway actually reminds me a lot of the one I just spun up. It's very similar. It's got a lot of the same similar colors. And it is, oh, look how bright that looks on camera. This is very saturated on camera. It's much softer in person. It is this beautiful kind of creamy yellow. It goes into an orangey red, a ginger color, um, a slightly green yellow, then a more citron lemony yellow. It goes into this slightly greenish, um, very, like a very pale like Tiffany box blue, goes into a true sky blue, goes into this darker cobalt, into charcoal, and yeah, that's, and then actually it ended with this yellow. So that is what it is. It's, it's beautifully soft. It's very nice. Um, I'm looking forward to spinning this and seeing how it turns out because this is probably going to be socks. Um, most of my Moon Rover braids, the plan to do with them is crazy, crazy stripy socks, whether through chain plying or through, I think I'll do that three ply technique again because it worked out pretty well this last time despite the leftovers. So yeah, I'm having a hard time keeping it. This one's a little bit more slick. Bamboo is very slippery, like tencel and silk. So there we go. It is um, very, very lovely. 
I'm looking forward to doing it. This is another one that I kind of actually want to spin it right away, but I'm going to make myself wait through at least one to two of these other spins before I let myself do that, just because otherwise I'll be doing nothing but selfish spinning. That's kind of what I feel like doing right now. So that came. And then I have one more small enabling thing to show off because I haven't been making a ton of purchases. And that is I decided to get a sock cube from Nomadic Yarns over on Etsy. And I could not resist the sweet little narwhal print. print and it looks like it's a design that is reminiscent of like Fair Isle, um, Norwegian stars and things. It's a very, very cute, very sweet little box bag. Got a good amount of lining in it. I can feel a good amount of interfacing in there. And then it's nicely finished off on the inside with this beautiful corally kind of peach tonal dot. It's a very cute little bag. I think it'll work pretty well for a pair of socks. It might work a little bit... No, I think I'll be able to fit two in there, but it might work a little better for those of you who knit one at a time versus me who does two at a time, but I think it'll still all fit in there just fine. So nice little bag for a nice little project. She also does beautiful self-striping yarns. I have been avoiding buying any of those. Those are really tempting. Um, if you've been seeing that gumdrops colorway that a lot of podcasters have been talking about, I've been coveting that for a long time. And then she has some other really, really nice ones. So there is that. And that is the end of pretty much the regular segments in the podcast. And I did mention in the beginning that I have been owing you all this thing I said I have started putting together, which is crafty lessons I learned in 2014. So I finally sat down today and I made myself write them out. I've been kind of mentally going over them for the last couple of weeks going, yeah, did I really learn that many lessons? And I decided there are five that pertain to crafting that I, I kind of learned and they solidified more in this last year. So the first one is kind of a duh, but we all kind of forget about it, which is that getting away from the computer and the smartphone devices with um, social media especially leads to increased productivity. Go figure. Um, this is what led me to decide to try screenless Sundays this year, was that realizing that on days when I managed to stay away from the computer and for long periods of time, I noticed that my productivity both in my regular things I need to do and in my crafty things just increased amazingly. Um, this is why I started watching podcasts on my Roku versus on my computer because it gave me an excuse to get away from it. And I've actually started intentionally leaving my cell phone in different rooms at times when I want to get a lot more stuff done because I'm less likely to check it. Um, it really is an electronic leash that you just feel the need to, at least I do, I feel the need to fiddle with it constantly and check it and to see what's updating and who's doing what. And that's all well and good, but it also means that I don't get as much stuff done because it ends up eating up a lot more time than you realize. So that was a lesson that definitely cemented itself in 2014. If you want to get more crafting done, turn off your screens and just sit and listen to music or listen to an ebook or watch podcasts because I mostly just listen to them to activities that involve listening rather than watching and actively engaging. Two. <laughs> buying more will not make me craft more. Um, basically, potential crafting does not equal more crafting. Um, I did pretty well last year with stopping buying yarn so much as I had been in the past. This year, I'm off to a pretty darn good start. I mean, I've made it almost all the way through January without any yarn purchases. I even had a chance to, and I actually just walked away from it. I don't know who I'm becoming, kittens. But this year, I'm going to focus on working on it with fiber and fabric because these are two other areas where I very much get into that same mentality of, oh, but look at the potential in this. Look what I could make with it. And by the time I do get around to using it, I'm like, man, I really don't love this thing anymore. I still like it, but I'm not as excited about it as I was when I first got it. So that was one of those lessons that helped cement itself in last year. And I finally, it just clicked with me. And I realized that Buying more doesn't mean I'm going to craft more, so I'm trying really hard to use up more of what I have. And this kind of, you know, it's kind of the same thing with number three. Third lesson that I have been realizing more and more over time, but really hit home last year, is that 
what I enjoy knitting versus what I will wear are two very, very different things. I love to knit bright colors. I mostly wear neutrals. I love to knit fussy, lacy, button-down cardigans and cabled cardigans and very complicated designs. I mostly wear really simple open front sweaters. And if I do wear a cardigan with buttons, the buttons never come unbuttoned. And it's usually just the top buttons. It's definitely not a full down, beautiful sweater. Um, so I've kind of decided, again, and this leads to the stash, is that I want to knit up a bunch of stuff in stash that I'm not as enamored with, and especially get through quantities of things that I'm not necessarily going to wear or find ways to make them usable. And because I have children, I can kind of pawn off some of those brighter colors on them and be like, hey, this works perfectly for you. Kind of like some very beautiful minty green tweed I'm looking at over there that I thought I was also going to knit into even just like a mama vertebrae. And now I'm saying you're going, ooh, I don't know. I don't even know if I want a minty green mama vertebrae. So it's either going to get over dyed or I'm going to turn it into a daughter sweater because I don't know. I already de-stashed part of it and left myself enough to work with, so we shall see. Now the only exception to this is socks. I will wear loud, wild, and crazy socks until the cows come home. I will wear, I won't wear, wear lacy socks, but I will wear cable socks. They don't bother me, they don't rub funny on my foot. Um, but that's pretty much where my crazy colors is going to have to stay. It's going to have to be either knit in to a mostly neutral garment, like my very stripy mama vertebrae I made, or it has to be on my feet. I'm just not going to wear it otherwise, and it seems silly to spend the time, because while I enjoy the process of knitting, I really am a product knitter. I knit things because I want them, and to wear them, and to use them. So there is that. And then fourth, um, this kind of, yeah, kind of, these all kind of, in a weird way, kind of tie into each other. I've discovered that I'm transitioning from a knitter, capital K, who spins, to a knitter and a spinner, capital S, who really wants to knit mostly in hand spun these days. I am seriously, seriously in love with hand spun. <laughs> and I don't think that's ending anytime soon. Um, so I really want to use up a lot of my more commercial and indie, dar indie yarns in stash. And I want to start filling my buckets with hand spun and knitting with hand spun and preferably very quickly after I finish it. So I'm hoping that a lot of these buckets back here are not going to be full anymore. I'd say I'm giving myself realistically between two and three years to get to this point because the big thing that's taking up space is sweater quantities and then I'm going to have to knit down sock yarn. And I think even at a rate that I'm going at right now, if I don't really add to my sock yarn stash, it's not going to take me too terribly long to get through. So that is the big thing. I learned that I am a spinner last year and that I really, really like spinning. And then the last one, which pertains to socks, because I'm also a sock knitter, whether I like to admit it or not, I learned that tighter gauge and smaller needles are, while they are a total pain in the rear, make all the difference in your socks. If you can bear to go down a half a needle size, now this isn't everybody, obviously. If you're already knitting on ones, zeros, or double zeros, you probably don't need to go down anymore. But if you're like me, and you're knitting socks, and you're insisting on doing it on size twos or US two and a halfs, unless you're a super tight knitter, and I am a tighter knitter, but these are still too loose, your socks are probably not knitting up at a tight enough gauge. And you might find that maybe you don't understand what the big deal is. Maybe you notice they get really loose and baggy by the end of the day. Maybe they're just, you know, they're just not that great. The fabric just doesn't seem to be all that nice and they don't really hug your foot. Try going down a half a needle size. And if you can tolerate it, if you're going super big, like two and a half, go down another one and adjust from there accordingly. Although you're probably not going to need to adjust your uh, cast on and sock numbers too terribly much because when they go on they'll be snug but they will loosen up by the end of the day and if you knit them tight enough they don't really spin around. I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to notice with my older pairs just how loose and baggy they are by the end of the day I'm wearing them and they start turning 
quarter turns around my foot or they start sliding down and I'm noticing how much nicer my newer pairs of socks fit and I have recently become a convert to zeros for regular and light fingering weight and ones for the heavier skeins. And I think that's really it. Um, I might show you the stuff that went, some of the stuff that went into this uh, shop last night that did not finish selling. But other than that, I'm going to let you all go because I think this is going to be a good 30 to 40 minute podcast. So let me get those real quick while I still got the lighting on my side and we're going to show those off and then I'm going to say goodbye for real. Now, if you do not want to see anything about the shop update, Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to talking to you next week. And for the rest of you, I'll be right back. So first off, a big thank you to everyone who placed orders yesterday during yesterday's update. They have all already gone out in the mail. I always do my best to try to get things out immediately. If you order for me in the morning, I will often have it at the post office by the afternoon. If not, definitely first thing the next day. But here are some of the things that were left over. Um, first, on Moon Pie Merino, I have three skeins of, a lot of these are whoopsies because, again, I just talked about the sleep deprived thing. I screwed up a lot of my dyeing in the last couple of weeks, too. This was Festive Conifer, and actually on screen, it doesn't look quite as green as it looks in person, but these are a little bit too heavy on the green, and the green ended up overshadowing a lot of the little um, blue and orange and yellow bits, but it's still a very, very lovely colorway. And I've got three of these left. I mean, see, you can see there's little bits of other colors in here, but they're knitting up, qu they knit up quite beautifully. Um, if you watch Foxes and Socks, Beth is right now knitting a pair of socks in this colorway, and it's an evergreen sock pattern. It is so pretty in that pattern. I've got a couple of experimentals that I somehow, somehow in the process, I messed up and my um, Twinkle Toes base did not stay as shiny. So these are more like a merino <laughs> nylon blend. This is a high twist base, uh, 438 yards to about 100 grams. But I've got uh, Experiment 042 here, which reminds me of the human circulatory system when you see it in textbooks. If you ever remember those older textbooks where they would have the body with the head off to the side and they would show the heart and they would show the veins and the arteries and the arteries would be a very specific shade of red and the veins would be a very specific shade of blue. It's very much those colors. And then it's over this beautiful, lovely light gray. And then I was playing with analogous color schemes and the most popular skein of the update has since gone, but I've already replicated that. That's already a repeatable. <laughs> I discovered I can do that yesterday. Um, but a sister idea was playing with analogous golds and pinks and reds over a soft warm gray. And this one was close, but not quite. So this one was experiment 044, if anyone is interested in her. She is quite pretty and very much shades. It looks like it has shades of like strawberry. There's kind of peachy colors in it. It's a very kind of fruity looking colorway. I believe this was one of the ones I showed you last week that I talked about. This is Experiment 045, which is the one that reminds me of Cheesecake. But here it is all reskeined up. Last week when you saw it, it was still... Um, in its dye skein. So here it is with the colors more evenly distributed so that you can see them. You can see the golden flecks and the longer stretches of like the strawberry pink color and then the smaller shots that look kind of almost like a cooler raspberry. Also very pretty. And then another one which is the very subtle one that I believe I showed that reminds me a little bit of like blossoms like those tree blossoms you see in the spring that are the soft pinks and then have like the very deep orange centers and like the little light green shoots off the sides, the little leaves. This is Experiment 41. And she is also quite pretty with a little bit of saffron, um, a little bit of yellow green, like a straw color. And yeah, and some stronger pink bits where I have them. And that's exactly what it reminds me of. It reminds me of like little tree blossoms. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave you all with that. I'm not going to show off every single thing I still have here, but those are the ones from yesterday's update that, as of the time of this recording, are still sitting in the shop. If you would like to go have a look, 
thank you so much for your time today, kittens. I hope that January is treating you well, that you have had an excellent week with crafting, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.